Right, we're back here at Exeter Police Station. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to have a look at these two cars and we're gonna see what it is that makes me stop you on the road. Guys, today's gonna to be a good one. We'll join you just after the intro. Peace. <laughs> Firstly, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I think I've taken over, so we're not going to call it GCM channel anymore. We're going to call it MPS Messenger channel. Uh, and today we're going to look at why do you get stopped? Before I joined the police, I've, I've had loads of modified cars, as you know. Uh, one in particular got me stopped uh, very regularly, um, which was a Fiesta RS Turbo. Um, and I don't know what it was about that car. It wasn't, you know, massively stand out but I used to get stopped every time I drove it and, and it was annoying. Um, so hopefully with what I can show you today, it might stop you getting stopped um, and, and stop you getting that, uh, that hassle. We've got a unique opportunity here to have a look at George's car and we can have a look at why it would attract my attention as a police officer and why I would be looking to stop it. And, and hopefully that will be beneficial to you. Firstly, what is it about the front of the car as I'm driving towards it that is gonna attract my attention on Georgie's car? So as you can see from there, the front plate, it can't be read clearly um, by me as I'm driving past in the other direction and therefore it can't be read clearly by the AMPR um, and it's not going to come up on my systems in the car. I get why people put them on the side, I know it's a trendy mod, but the problem with George's one is that it bends around the side and therefore it can't be easily read. Okay, there are other things about the front of George's car as well. So the green lights, for instance. Yes, I know you can have steady blue and green lights, but they can't appear or be flashing. In this particular instance, George is running BC coilovers. Now they're probably set to be quite firm. So with the UK roads as they are, they're not the smoothest. As you're driving along with the suspension so firm, the front of your car is gonna be going like this. Now to the car in front, if they're looking in their mirror, is that gonna appear flashing to them? Quite likely it is, yeah. So, you know, therefore those lights are gonna appear flashing and they contravene that construction and use. So that's one thing that we're gonna be looking for and that's why we say to you, please don't have the blue and green because then if you don't have them, you don't have that problem and it doesn't attract our attention. Obviously not everyone's got an ST and the models will vary, but what I'm trying to get across is that the, the combination of these different things would be a reason why I would think, should I be stopping that car? Largely the reason that we stop cars is through the manner of driving. But also, as I've explained, you know, there are certain things on here that would give me cause to think, mm, should I be checking that car? Um, and like I say, the main reason would be the number plate isn't readable. So the AMPR will give us all the information that we need on the car. Um, so it will tell us if the MOT is in date, it will tell us whether it's it got insurance held, it will tell us who the drivers are that are insured on that vehicle, it will tell us the registered keeper, the colour of the car. So if the car's been wrapped um, and you haven't told DVLA and it comes back as a different colour on AMPR as to what we're looking at, then of course that's a reason why we're going to stop the car to see whether it's on cloned plates, if it is the correct car, um, and it's just another reason why we would be stopping you. Now we've got you stopped by the side of the road, let's move around to another part of the car and I'll show you some of the things that we'll be looking for. Now we've got George stopped by the side of the road, let's have a look at some other things that I'm going to look at now I've got him there. First and foremost, we're looking at tyres and things like that, okay, are those tyres legal? Have they got the correct amount of tread on them? Okay, that's a safety feature and it's something that we would check on any car we stop by the side of the road. So to check the tyres, we'll be using a tread depth gauge and uh, we'll use that across the full width of the tyre to make sure that it's got in excess of 1.6 mil across 75% of the tyre. Okay, that's something that we would check on any vehicle that we stop, that's not specific to modified cars. What is specific to modified cars is that if you've got camber or your vehicle is lowered, there may be wear on that tyre where potentially it's rubbing um, or the camber is causing it to wear unevenly within the tyre. Okay, so that's something that we would be checking on a modified car. So what I can also see um, is the, uh, the low line kit on George's car, the mud flaps, not a major issue as long as it's got no sharp edges on it, absolutely fine. Okay, I can also see a big brake kit on George's car. Um, again, it, it's not a major issue. As long as the insurance company know about this stuff, there's no reason why you can't have that, okay? The wing mirrors, 
Again, not a problem to us. George's tints on the back here um, are a little bit darker than they would be from the factory. Um, but anything past the B pillar here, backwards, we're not concerned about that, okay? All we're concerned about with the window tints, and we covered that in a previous video, is from the B pillar forwards and the front screen, okay? So anything past the B pillar, we're not worried about that with regards to the window tints. The last thing I can see from here on George's car is the spoiler razors and also the lip on the, on the edge of the spoiler. Again, not a big issue from us as long as there's no sharp edges or anything that could hurt anyone in the event of an accident. Now looking at the back of the car, there's a few things on here that would attract my attention. Okay, so we've got the 4D plate. There's no issue with a 4D plate, okay? It's perfectly fine to have that 4D plate. So if my attention had been attracted to George's car by noise as it was coming towards me, now I'd be looking at the exhaust system, okay? So I'd have a look underneath, where are the back boxes? Are there back boxes on that system? Does that system comply, okay? Because if we're getting complaints about noise, that's generally wise because people have straight piped the cars. We've been over this in previous videos. Have a look back at those and it gives you all the legislation um, with regards to that. So getting lower down on the car here, I can see that George has changed the rear diffuser. He's also got carbon tips on the exhaust pipe. Again, that's a cosmetic thing. It's not a major issue for us. Also on George's car here, we've got a rear wiper delete and we've got the tinted lights on the side. Rear wiper delete, Again, it's, it's not a major issue for us, but it would be more of a safety thing for you. Can you see out the back if it's raining? Probably not as well as if you had the wiper there, but I guess it's a popular mod, and who am I to say whether you should have that or not? Uh, the tinted lights, the lights need to be clear when they're on, okay? So we need to be able to see them clearly. Don't tint them so much um, that they're not working properly. I'm gonna get George to put the lights on now so that we can see how bright George's are. So as you can see, with the brake lights on there, you know, they're fully bright enough. That's not a problem for me. If George takes his foot off of the brake pedal, we can still see that the tail lights are clearly visible. Okay, so as long as everything is working there as it should be, I don't have a problem with that. Um, the number plate lights as well, Yes, they're quite bright, but the actual LED isn't visible, okay? So you're allowed that white light on there. Obviously, you're allowed that uh, reversing white light as well, but they're the only white lights that you're allowed on the back of the car. During a routine traffic stop, we will normally approach the car from this angle, and that's an officer safety thing for us. But as I approach from here, I can see that there are modifications that George has done inside the car. Let's take a deeper look at what George has done inside the car, and I can show you some examples. So looking into the car, now, the first thing that gets my attention is George's bucket seats and the racing harnesses. Now, they're not a major issue for us. Obviously, you need to tell your insurance company, but also please, please make sure they are set up correctly and they are FIA approved, okay? That is really important. Safety is paramount here. We see a lot of racing harnesses that aren't set up properly and therefore they're dangerous, okay? So please, please, and I can't stress that enough, please get them set up properly. Okay, looking in the back of George's car then, we can see the K-brace, the roll cage, and the rear seat delete. Not a major issue for us, but please, please make sure it's fitted correctly and it is safe. That's the big thing for us, is it safe? Normally I wouldn't sit on the back of your car, um, but George is quite happy for me to do so for the video. At the start, I mentioned the intercooler and my attention was drawn to the writing on the intercooler and the fact that the upgraded intercooler could lead to other mods under the bonnet. So opening up George's bonnet here, instantly I can see stuff that wasn't there from the factory. So we've got the strut brace, we've got the induction kit with the Group A on it, we've got an AirTech plenum, we've got the hydro-dipped engine covers. So I can instantly see that there's things going on here. What I'm looking for basically is that they're insured, um, your, your insurance company know about them. There's no real issues with that upgrade of the performance, um, but is it insured? And if it's got all that on it, it's probably remapped as well. Um, I can also have a look in it and, and look for things like the turbo, um, if I can see it, um, and see whether it's got a nice shiny big turbo on it. Um, and it's just something else that the insurance company need to know about. What we find with modified cars a lot of the time is not only is the exterior of the car really, really clean, but also so is the engine bay. As much money is spent in the engine bay as it is on the rest of the car. Ultimately, what we're looking for is that what's on there is safe. That is the main thing from our point of view. 
is it safe? So we looked at big brake kits and we looked at the tires around the other side. Now what I'm looking for is suspension, okay? And the main thing is that the suspension isn't too low, that it causes the tires to rub or the wheels to rub on anything, that there's no sharp edges around the wheel arch, particularly where the suspension is so low that the wheel arch has been rolled, okay? Now what we find a lot of the time is where it's been rolled poorly, it leaves sharp edges around the wheel arch, okay? We can't have that. Okay, looking inside, I can see what suspension's on it. I mean, some of them will be so low that you can't see from this angle, so you have to look from underneath. I'll go underneath if I need to. But I'm looking inside to see whether it's just had lowering springs fitted. You can normally see that by the color of the springs, um, or whether it's got coilovers. Coilovers will allow the suspension to be adjusted in ride height and how firm it is. Um, and a lot of the really low cars you see will be on coilovers because they can adjust them up and down to get them at the right height that they want. Occasionally you will see a car that's on air ride. Um, air ride is very, very expensive and it allows them to adjust from inside the car the height of the suspension. So if you're at a car meet and you see a car where the front splitter here is literally on the floor and you think, how can that drive? Well, it doesn't with it like that. It's on air ride. When they leave the meet, they will raise the suspension up um, and therefore it can go at any ride height they want it to for normal driving. So one of the main things that I'm looking for on the suspension is cut springs. Cut springs, really, really dangerous. It's a massive no-no, okay? People will tell you it's fine, it's not. The springs are developed in the factory to have compression rates throughout them. If you're taking out one or two of those coils, it completely annihilates that compression rate and it makes the springs very, very dangerous. They can also fall out of the cups and we've had that being the cause of accidents. So what I'm looking for to see whether they're cut is if there's a fresh cut or there's like sharp metal on the springs or another indication is that they're held in with tie wraps to stop them falling out of the cups. So please, please look out for um, cut springs. A cut spring would be an instant prohibition, okay? We will not let a car drive away with cut springs. They are that dangerous. So we've brought another car in now to show you an, another example of a modified car. Now this one's a bit of a garage queen. Looking at it, you wouldn't think it was particularly modified. It looks fairly standard as to how it came out the factory and it's kind of called OEM Plus because it's got that original look um, but it's better than it was when it came out the factory. So this one is actually modified um, to what they call stage four um, and that is around 400 brake horsepower. Now when we looked at George's car we talked about the intercooler on the front and the writing that was on it kind of gave away that it had that extra power in the engine. This one, it's got the upgraded intercooler, it's nice and shiny, it's got no writing on it, okay, so it's a little bit more stealth. Um, unless you knew about RSs, you wouldn't know that the bonnet vents were in a different colour um, and the wheels were supposed to be silver, whereas these ones are black, but externally it looks pretty much standard. When we look at the wheels though, and we're looking at a little bit more detail, you've got the giveaway signs. You've got the big brake kit there. It's got an AP Racing brake kit, and it's also got wheel spacers. Now for this one, the wheel spacers just clear the brake kit a little bit. Okay, so it's just bringing that wheel out slightly. There's no real issue with that, okay? Um, but just so that you're aware, if you look inside there, um, you will see that there's a silver wheel spacer that just brings that wheel out slightly. Now, as long as the wheels are inside the arches on the car as you stop, it's not a major issue, okay? If they're outside of the arches so that you can see the tread pattern on the tire, then they're too far out, okay? On this car as well, um, it's got all the hardware under the bonnet, um, that, uh, and I'll show you that in a sec, um, that goes with the upgrades to the engine, and it's also got a full exhaust system on it. So it's running a sports cat, and it's also running the full Miltec exhaust system with the back boxes, which means it complies with the legislation. So when we looked at George's car, we mentioned about the under the bonnet being as clean as the outside of the car. Well, there you go. You know, this is what people spend their time on. They spend their time cleaning the car in its entirety. Um, on George's car, George, you noticed, had the Group A cone filter, um, and it won't look much different to the factory one that came with it. So unless you know what you're looking for, you're not gonna notice things like that, but you will notice what's on George's car, which is that big cone filter. 
Okay, the only giveaway signs under here are the blue hoses, really. That's the only thing, really, that you would notice that would make you think, mm, that car's not standard. Other than that, this car looks pretty much how it came out of the factory. Now, I really hope that these videos that we've done for you today do help you understand maybe what you should be looking for. But more importantly, we're bringing light upon the modified car scene and trying to educate young people to do things correctly. Right guys, so thank you so much for reaching the end of today's video. Now I do wanna take a brief second just to mention something that's quite personal to myself. I personally deal with the policeman with respect. I haven't had any bad experiences and I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like every policeman in the world is amazing because similar to us as well, quite often the actions of the minority often paint the picture of the majority. Owen is a lovely person. He is here to make sure that you guys do the right thing, just to make sure that you guys are safe on the road doing something that you love with your modified cars. Now, what I wanted to say is, if you have respect for him, he'll have respect for you. If you're polite to him, he'll be polite to you. And this is what is important, guys. You usually get what you give. Now, long story short, in context, what you need to do, be honest, be polite, that's all I can say. He will usually respond with exactly the same. I'm sure you can add something in there if you want, Owen. Owen, do you agree with me? You usually get what you give, isn't that correct? Absolutely, yeah. Like George said, we're not on any bonus scheme or anything. We don't get any incentive for giving tickets. We don't enjoy giving tickets. Um, unfortunately, sometimes the interaction goes that way and we've got no other choice. Yeah, yeah. But I will be as fair as I possibly can be with anyone. But if I give somebody a warning one day and then stop them two days later and they've done nothing about that warning, yeah. then it leaves me with no choice but to use mm. enforcement if I need to. I don't enjoy it, um, but sometimes that's just the way it is. Um, and it's, when I stop somebody um, and ask them about the modifications on their car, if they stand there and tell me there ain't none, then the conversation's very, very difficult um, and, and it makes our life much harder. And, and at the end of the day, all we're trying to do is keep people safe on the roads. You know, we go to stuff and we go to things that hopefully you will never see. Mm. Um, and it's not nice and it's not nice going and knocking on people's doors and telling them that their father, son, brother, um, whatever, isn't coming home tonight. Yeah, because for sure. 99.9% .9 of the collisions that we go to and that we see that end in fatal or seriously injured, um, they're preventable and it's something that's really simple and, and something that should never have happened and, and uh, that's really sad. For sure guys, now I am learning a lot as you can imagine working alongside Owen MPS Messenger but guys this is an opportunity for you to let us all know in the comments what you'd like to see. If there's been something you've been curious about in regards to the police and cars or just the police in general, let us know in the comments and I'm sure the police team would consider maybe letting us do some videos on it. So as always guys you've been amazing, all the support is just incredible, the channel is just going mad. But for now guys as always you've been amazing, smash a like on the video if you haven't already, consider subscribing if you're new, let me know what you think in the comments and we will join you guys in the next video. But for now, GCM, roll the outro. Peace.